I want to talk about basic grading in the Blackboard Gradebook. It's fairly straightforward at face value. Of course, there are situations that may become a little complicated or cumbersome, and that's why you're going to ask for help when you need it. So I have three basic types of situations here. We have a quiz that by virtue of it being comprised of multiple choice, true, false, matching, or hotspot questions, the system automatically grades the assignment and posts that grade. There's no human intervention needed. I'm under this pretend student user. If I want to view the results of that quiz, I just click and I can go to view. Post we don't need to do because we've already allowed the system to post that grade automatically. Remember, grading is just the first step. You have to actually post the grades, and there are a number of ways to do that before students can view them. That's a difference from the old version of Blackboard. So if I just go to view, it gives me a lot of information about that particular quiz attempt, when it was submitted, the questions, and the student answer as well as the correct answer. You also have a section here where you could leave feedback of probably not something most instructors want to do for a multiple choice true false matching hotspot type of quiz or exam. Second of all is a submitted assignment that you'd find with nearly any written document even works with PowerPoints. Notice that I have an alert that this particular grade is a new submission even though I think this one's very old. In order to grade that I could just click grade now and then I could go to I could just assign a grade blindly, that would be unwise. But I'm going to click view, and it's going to take me to an inline grader. First of all, I can get at the assignment content, the prompt or the instructions for the submission by expanding the assignment content heading. And then I'm actually looking at the submission content right now. And so directly beneath that is a link to download this RTF file, that's just a basic word processing file. But you don't have to do that. You can use the inline grader, which is comprised of several tools, including a drawing tool, the ability to insert an image or a stamp, the ability to highlight a particular word or phrase and insert a comment. So we click the insert comment feature first and then click where we'd like to insert that comment. The ability to undo or redo an action. The ability to add text on top of the document. And we also have some other capabilities. Here's another download button. Here's a print button. We can look for words or phrases within the document. And if we had content in a content library, such as a handout or some other type of quick document we would like to attach to that visual feedback, we could certainly do so. So after grading, we can in the upper right corner of this screen, assign a grade, give some additional general feedback via the feedback for student section in this panel. We can also collapse that if we don't want to see it. And then we can hit save. Now, after doing that, the grade is not yet posted. So in order for that student to see your feedback, see the grade, you need to click inside the cell that represents that student and that particular assignment and then click post. Now you'll notice that it is posted. Last major type of grading is grading a discussion board post. Again, same kind of concept. I'm going to click grade now. I'm going to view the post. The Blackboard grade book uses artificial intelligence to give a general analysis of that student response. It will give a score comparing the sentence complexity, number of content versus functional words, a critical thinking score, how much word variation exists in the student post. Now, you need a number of posts in a particular discussion board assignment to get some comparative data. I've used this in my fall class, and I found that it's interesting, but not particularly helpful unless it's just confirming what you think you already know. A three-sentence response is going to have a much lower score than a two-page response, obviously. But it is interesting. It, it just confirms for me 
the students I believe are already doing a really good job, you tend to get a higher score with more uh, lexical complexity and variation between content and functional words. So we could, uh, at this point, assign a grade. You could click this plus just to the right of the grade assignment and leave feedback. Going back to the grade book, the grade is present, however it's not posted. You just need to click inside that cell and click post. Now, you can do the same exact thing in list view. We can go back to list view, go to gradable items, and then rather than see the student and every gradable item in a grid format, we have a list view for just this quiz. And so all the features and functions are present. They are just displayed differently. So as quickly as I could explain it, that is basic grading in the Blackboard gradebook using grid view.